Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding SPMI. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to the SPMI protocol and how it's used in modern power management applications. SPMI stands for System Power Management Interface and is defined by the MIPI Alliance, the latest version 2.0 having been released in 2012. This protocol is used for communicating between one or more power controllers or systems on a chip, and one or more power management integrated circuits, or PMIX. SPMI can be used to both monitor and dynamically regulate voltages, which is important in three main areas. The first is maximizing efficiency by managing power utilization. For example, by dynamically changing voltage and current levels to match processor performance requirements. You may hear this referred to as dynamic frequency and voltage scaling. SPMI also natively supports commands for minimizing power consumption in mobile devices by moving systems or subsystems in and out of low power modes. A third important function of SPMI is controlling power sequencing, that is, providing voltage to devices in a given order or in a sequence with specific timing. SPMI is a shared two-wire serial bus one wire being the unidirectional serial clock, and the other wire being bidirectional serial data. Note that the use of a shared bus reduces the number of required lines, or pins, in multi-device systems. This bus is operated in a master-slave arrangement with up to four masters and up to 16 slaves. At any given time, one master assumes the role of the bus owner master, who is responsible for controlling the bus and generating the clock signal. Slave nodes may also be request capable, that is, they can initiate communications. Two voltage levels are supported, 1.2 and 1.8 volts, as well as two speed classes, a high speed class that goes up to 26 megahertz, and a low speed class that has a maximum speed of 15 megahertz. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll concentrate on the messages that are exchanged between devices on an SPMI bus. Transactions on an SPMI bus occur in the form of so-called command sequences. Between these sequences, the bus is idle. That is, both the clock and data lines are in the low state. A command sequence consists of four parts. A sequence start condition that's used to indicate the start of a sequence, after which various types of frames can be transmitted. As we'll see, a frame is made up of an address, a command, a data and or address bytes in some cases, and a parity bit for error checking. A special bus park cycle is used at various points in this process, and SPMI also includes an acknowledge or ACK bit to confirm proper reception of some types of transmitted frames. Let's begin by explaining the sequence start condition or SSC. As mentioned a moment ago, this sequence is used by a master or slave to indicate the start of a command sequence. This is done by generating a rising edge and then a falling edge on the data line while the clock line is in the low state. After the sequence start condition, the bus owner master starts the clock and frame transmission can then begin. There are three different types of SPMI frames. The first is command frames, which have a target master or slave address, followed by a command type, such as sleep, reset, read, write, etc. Some command frames are then followed by data or address frames, which contain a register address or register data. There's also a so-called no response frame, which is just the data line being held low for a certain number of clock cycles. Both the command frame and the data or address frames have an additional parity bit for error checking. SPMI uses odd parity, which means that this bit is set to zero if the frame contains an odd number of ones, and is set to one if the frame contains an even number of ones. Let's talk more about the address field. All devices on the bus must have a unique address, which is indicated in a four bit address field. Addresses can be divided into two categories. The first is the master identifier, which consists of two bits or four total master addresses. The second is the slave identifier, which uses all four bits 
and thus permits up to 16 slave identifiers. These can be either individual or group identifiers. Note that addressing in SPMI is static and is defined by the manufacturer or by the system integrator. Bus Park is another important feature of SPMI and is used by the bus owner to release the bus. A bus park occurs when, during the first half or middle of a clock cycle, S data is driven low. Bus park is performed in order to return the bus to the idle state and thus allow another device to take control of the bus in order to send a command or an acknowledgement. Acknowledgements are used in SPMI to ensure reliable communications. After the frame is sent, a bus park is performed to transfer control of S data to the receiving device. A bus owner, who is still in control of the clock line, generates one clock cycle, during which the device controlling S data can send either a 1 to acknowledge or ACK correct reception of the frame, or it can send a 0 as a negative acknowledgement or NACK. After this, the bus master performs a second bus park in order to release control of the bus. SPMI commands can be grouped into four general categories. State management commands, the authentication command, register access commands, and the transfer bus ownership command. Let's go through these in a bit more detail. State management commands are used together with two external signals to move an SPMI slave between one of four states, startup, active, sleep, and shutdown. The reset command, or the external enable and reset end signals, can be used to move the slave from any state into the startup state, which is the state used for device initialization. The external enable signal is used to transition to the active or power on state. This state also allows read-write access to the slave registers. The sleep command moves the slave into the lower power sleep state, and wake up moves the slave back into the active state. Finally, the shutdown command moves the slave to the shutdown state, in which all power is off. The four state management commands we just looked at all have the same format. They begin with the sequence start condition, followed by the 4-bit address of the slave whose state is being changed. Next comes the command payload. The first part is a fixed pattern, and the last two bits are used to indicate which of the four state management commands is being sent. Reset, sleep, shutdown, or wake up. As usual, the command payload includes a parity bit, and correct reception by the slave is signaled by means of the bus park act procedure that we described earlier. SPMI also supports authentication, which can be used for device identification and intellectual property management. Following the start sequence condition and the slave address, a command frame with a fixed pattern is used to identify this as an authentication frame. There then follow four challenge frames from the master and four response frames from the slave. Note that these challenge response frames alternate as shown here. The content of these frames are defined by the manufacturer and may be encrypted. Slaves that do not support authentication send the special all zeros, no response frame that we mentioned earlier in this presentation. Another category of messages are the register access commands, which are used to read data from, or write data to, the registers of a device. This is done using so-called data address commands, which typically contain the target master or slave address, the address of the register on that device, and the contents of that register. For example, a master might query a slave with a given address to obtain the contents of a certain register in that slave, and the slave would then respond by sending the register contents. We'll look at this in more detail on the next slide. There are numerous SPMI register access commands, some which allow addressing larger register address spaces and or which allow returning larger numbers of data bytes. Register access commands can also be used to retrieve the device descriptor block of a master or slave in order to obtain information about that device's manufacturer, capabilities, etc. Here's an example of a simple register read command. 
As with other commands, we begin with the sequence start condition, followed by the register read command. This part of the command is sent by the master and contains both the slave address and the address of the register whose contents we want to read. A bus park is then used to hand the bus over to the target slave, who responds with the contents of the requested register, after which another bus park is performed to return the bus to the idle state. In both cases, the data is protected by a parity bit. In a system with only one master and no request-capable slaves, there is no need to manage or control access to the bus, since the bus will always be controlled by the single master. However, if a bus contains additional masters or request-capable slaves, then a bus arbitration process is needed for determining who gains access to the shared bus. This process is managed by the bus owner master, who can also transfer ownership to another master by means of a special transfer bus ownership command. Since the bus arbitration process is somewhat complicated and is only needed in some cases, we won't cover it in detail in this presentation. So please see the SPMI specification for a complete description of this process and its associated messages. Analyzing and troubleshooting SPMI is normally performed using an oscilloscope. Basic analysis involves both decoding frames as well as filtering on certain frame types. Oscilloscopes also allow debugging of any signal integrity issues on the bus, and they provide the ability to correlate protocol commands and analog voltage, current, or power measurements. For example, an oscilloscope could be used to measure the amount of time that elapses between an SPMI state change command and changes in the analog voltage output. Or they could be used to measure the amount of current a slave draws in different operating states or under different operating conditions. Since SPMI is a two-wire bus, two oscilloscope channels are required, one for clock and one for data. These signals can be acquired by means of single-ended or differential probes. And for scopes that support mixed signal analysis, special logic probes can also be used to acquire the clock and data signals. Let's end with a brief summary. SPMI, or the System Power Management Interface, is used for communication between power controllers and power management integrated circuits, or PMIX. Among other things, SPMI allows voltages to be monitored and regulated dynamically, which in turn improves efficiency, minimizes power consumption, and enables advanced functions such as power sequencing. As we've seen in this presentation, SPMI is a two-wire master-slave protocol that exchanges messages in the form of command sequences for functions such as state management, register access, authentication, etc. Since SPMI can support up to four masters and up to 16 slaves on a single bus, it also specifies a bus arbitration scheme for controlling access to this shared bus. And finally, oscilloscopes can be used to both analyze SPMI commands as well as measure related analog signals. This concludes our presentation, Understanding SPMI. If you'd like to learn more about SPMI, power electronics or power measurements, or oscilloscopes for analyzing SPMI, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.